Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going over just a little overview of my Hobart Handler 190 uh, 230 volt wire feed welder. It has between 25 to 190 amp output and it's made by Hobart, if I didn't say that at the beginning. This welder is a pretty simple welder. I think it's mainly marketed towards more of like the homeowners or the hobbyist type uh, welders or fabricators. It's a really good welder and it has a very solid quality build to it. Now, uh, you know, as you can see, I run it fairly hot. This is kind of a general setting that I run it at. And this runs in a really good bead, pretty hot. It does have quite a bit of control. Although I have found that the down at the one down here and at the lower end, it does not run as great of an arc. Now, that being said, I am not a professional welder at all. I am not a professional welder. I am all self-taught. I have never had any training on welding. But what I can tell you from my experience with welders is this is a far cry better than a lot of the Harbor Freight welders that you get out there and some of the other generic Chinese stuff that you get out there as well. Now, reason why that I would say that is because everything on this has a very premium feel to it. it. Everything's done well, everything's powder coated nicely and painted. It's everything that you would expect out of, out of a Hobart welder or something of maybe even uh, uh, its cousin, a Miller welder. You can really expect some pretty good quality stuff out of this. All the plastic that's on here, these dials, it's fairly high density plastic stuff. It's good stuff. Um, pretty simple front end here. There's not a lot you can do with it. There's no interface or anything that you can interact with. And like I said, so the controllability, you just kind of set it and forget and kind of do a multiples, multiple thicknesses with what you know maybe you got one setting on it's not you don't have a lot of fine-tuning control as maybe a professional welder using a professional Miller uh, like a Millermatic or something like that machine you may be able to have now this is a fairly economical welder that's why I've got it like I said over when I did my review of my Air Force 250 CI plasma cutter I I mentioned about how I had a budget I kinda had a strict budget I had to stick to and I and I could get a couple things or I could get one thing so I got a couple things so this is not the highest end welder that they make but I do plan on upgrading at some point as far as runtime goes they say that you can go at the higher end of things or roughly about middle middle of the way kinda like what you see it here you can go about middle of the road on your amp settings uh, I believe it's at 160 amps, somewhere around there, between 150 and 160 amps. You can take and run this machine for approximately about 30 minutes. Now, I would say that that is probably true, uh, depending on how well you are holding your arc, your arc length, and things like that is going to take it is going to determine that um, as far as that amp draw that's on the machine and how long it's going to run. But in normal use, I can usually get about an hour of welding before I have to let the machine run to cool down. And it does take fairly long. It takes a good 20 minutes or so of it running. And it's kind of the higher stages, you know, for it to kind of cool down or cool back down to where you can start welding again. One thing you'll notice is when you're starting to exceed its limits is your arc won't hold as tight and it'll get really erratic and sputtery on you. And that's how you know that you're exceeding the limits of the machine and you just got to back down the amp draw. Uh, you know, you just have to stop welding for a little bit, go get some lunch, get something else jigged up and fixtured and you're ready to weld. Now, I would not probably recommend this if this is your main stick. If your main stick is welding and that's what you do for a living, I probably wouldn't take and recommend this. But for my shop, since I'm mostly blacksmithing related, most that I do with this welder is just weld on leaves to stems or, you know, the occasional fabrication job, like maybe welding a trailer together. Uh, it's built every tool that you've seen in my shop, including my power hammers and my presses 
and pretty much any other time I've had to have any sort of fabrication, it's helped to build all those things. So this thing can be invaluable in the shop. And once again, MIG welding, it's a, uh, you know, I'll show you the gun here. It's just point and shoot. And if you can hold your arc off the right amount and, uh, you know, pretty much stick two pieces together, you can get the swing of it. Now, I know I'm oversimplifying the welding, but I'm a simple guy. And like I said, I'm not really trained in this or anything. All I can do is give you my honest opinions. Now over on the side plate, I'll take you over to that here in just a second. It's a little harder for me to get into because of it being underneath here. Uh, it can take a 10, I believe it's a 10 pound, it's either a 10 pound or five pound spool, I forget which, uh, on the side plate here. I'll put it somewhere in here what it was, whether it's a 10 pound spool or something. You'll see it pop on the screen to correct me if I'm wrong. But it takes a pretty good spool. It's really easy to feed the wire. Uh, like I said, fairly premium, not a lot to go wrong with this welder, and that's what I like about it. You don't have to worry about touch screens or LCDs going out. You don't have to worry about a whole lot. Like I said, this is literally about as simple as it gets unless you have yourself a good old-fashioned buzz box like stick welder. So without further ado, let's go over to the other side of the machine. I'll show you the internal workings of it and let you know what I think about it there. Okay, so here we are. We're in at the side door panel. Let me get the ground clamp out of the way. Uh, that is one thing I wish they would do a little bit better. This is a fairly premium ground clamp, but they really, they kind of chinsed it on the wire here. I will say that. This could have been a thicker gauge ground clamp wire. Uh, there definitely is enough ground clamp lead here at roughly about six feet of lead that you get with it. Uh, yeah, about six foot of lead or so. And, you know, there's enough lead for jobs like this. I wish it came with a little longer and a little heavier duty wires on it, but that's okay. You can't have it all in this type of price point or price range. I don't know if you guys can see that really well at all. Let me move you in a little bit. If you can just bear with me for a second there, ladies and gents. I'll get you under this hood so you can see what we got going on. Okay, well that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get into you. Uh, anyways, so you can do 030, 035 wire on what's ha what the machine has here. It's got a spool. This is what feeds it, and it kind of just, you know, you take it off on one and or the other, shift it for what size wire you're running. I run 030 instead of .035 wire in it, and it takes that pretty well. Uh, I don't know if the 35 wire would do any better or not, and it looks like it's a 10-pound spool, so I didn't have to correct myself after all. But essentially, sorry guys, going dark, going dark on me here. We'll get you in focus. There we are. So yeah, pretty pretty simple operation. Uh, you can reverse the positive and negative terminal to run it at different things. And there's also in here, I don't know if you guys can see that there, there is a regular transmit torch or there's a spool gun switch. Now, depending on when you buy this thing, let me close this lid here. Depending on when you buy this thing, you can actually get a spool gun with it. Uh, and that's what I chose. I chose that option, a little a little fancier option to get the spool gun. I probably won't be able to pull it out right now, but it comes with a pretty quality spool gun as well. And, you know, I'll take you up top and I'll just show you that up top. Oakley, Oakley. Here we are up top. If you take and choose, if you can get this thing done in a kit format, you get the spool gun included. I think, don't quote me on this, but I believe for this particular model, I think I paid a total of $800 in total. You'll have to check the links in the description. Those are affiliate links if you want to take and buy this type of unit online. I'll try to rally up something that is, if it's out of stock or something, something that is exactly comparable to what I have. If you are interested in doing that, it also helps support the channel. But I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out and show you what I got. Now, I haven't really done anything with this since I bought it. 
because I have not went out and got pure argon to do any sort of this type of welding, do any of this type of welding. I'll just leave that in the box, but it's a pretty much a basic spool gun kit. This is like brand spanking new. And you know, and so your aluminum spool will go in there, and it's just like so. Uh, really good quality build on that. I don't know anything about welding aluminum at all with a MIG. I hope to try it someday. We'll see how all that goes, and then I can give that more of a review uh, when I actually go that route. I don't like to, I don't like to review stuff in my shop that I really have no clue whether it works or doesn't work, or whether I know how what I'm talking about or not. So I won't be reviewing it today on that. So I have to figure out how to put this back in here. <laughs> now it's always got to be something. So, anyways, yeah, it's a pretty. It's a pretty nice spool gun, like I said. Pretty nice case, comes with it. You know, if you get it in the kit format like I did, I thought it was a pretty good deal, and it was the cheapest that I had found. Now, looking back, I will probably, I'm probably gonna move on up to the next largest, or the one that's, I think they call it an Iron Man, like 230 or something like that. It's a whole self unit and stuff. I'm probably going to upgrade to that at some point, and I'll let you all know how that actually works. But anyways, this is my shop. This is my shop tools and stuff. Let me know what you think in the description down below, what you have as a welder, what works for you, and if you have any recommendations for me. I greatly appreciate hearing those as well. So thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it that big thumbs up. If you didn't, there's always that thumbs down option. And like I always say, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.